What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to become a photographer in one video because I have no idea how long this is going to be. So you don't have to have a professional camera to be watching this. You can have an iPhone. iPhones these days are with the camera quality and a lot of photographers are actually mad at how good the iPhone camera quality has become. So keep that in mind. Next time you spend all that money on an iPhone, you're also paying for a camera. So I'm gonna just give you a little mini tutorial to start off. Basically, I took a photography class so that you don't have to. And then I'm gonna give you some basic tips that anybody can use to just make the f their photos better in every way possible. So if you wanna step up your Instagram, keep watching. And also, if you like more of this, if you like college and lifestyle videos, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So let's just jump right into the video. So I shoot with a Nikon D5600, which is a DSLR camera, and it's at the top of their beginner level cameras. So I think the body was roughly $850 maybe 800 and then it came with a standard lens which is the one that I'm actually shooting with right now because this camera does also film that's part of the reason I bought it then I went and bought a prime lens my 50 milliliter lens for I believe it was 170 you don't have to spend a ton of money on a nice camera though you can buy a refurbished one you can buy them off eBay people sell their old cameras all the time you can definitely buy an entry-level DSLR the reason that I invested a little bit more in mine is because I had been using actually Are we focused? So this was my first camera. It was my first Nikon. I can't show you the one I'm using now because I'm obviously filming on it. This is a Nikon D40 and you can probably buy this now for $200. Now I made that up so like don't don't quote me on that. I could probably sell this for two, maybe like 150. So if you really wanted to practice your photography game, you can definitely invest in a cheap camera. This was given to me by my uncle. It was his old camera. So again, look for old cameras to practice on. But also if you have an iPhone, this is still really important because today we're gonna be talking about light. Honestly, with the natural light, this is my phone camera just as good as my camera quality, okay? So you do not need a Canon or a Nikon or a Sony or whatever you want to use because you have Apple. <laughs> Thanks, Steve Jobs. Now, I like to think of photography as the study and manipulation of light because that's essentially all it is. And the three essential basics of a camera are exactly that, playing with the light. So you've probably heard of them before, but I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what they are. So the first one is ISO. Now, ISO is the amount of artificial light in your photos. So the camera manually lets you add light and brightens the photo. You have to keep in mind that the higher you make your ISO, the grainier it will get because the image quality will go down. So naturally you wanna use natural light. And so the next one is shutter speed. Now shutter speed is exactly how it sounds. Shutter speed is how fast your lens is opening and closing, which allows a certain amount of light into the camera lens. It's basically the amount of time that your shutter is open. If you think of it like going out into the rain, if you stand out in the rain for a really long time, you're gonna get drenched. If you run to your car through the rain, you're not gonna get as wet because you weren't in the rain as long. That's how I remember it. So it makes your photos lighter or darker based on how fast that lens is opening and closing. And this affects the exposure of a photo. Shorter shutter means you're capturing less light. And so the longer the shutter, the brighter your photo. Next we have aperture. And aperture is, again, manipulating light. <laughs> So your aperture or your f-stop is kind of your, it's playing with your depth of field. Your aperture is this little, think of it like your pupil. It's like the pupil of a camera. It's an opening in a lens through which light passes. It expands and shrinks as you adjust your f-stop. Adds more or less light in through the little peephole. And this adds dimension. This is how you get that blurry effect when the background is blurry and you have that bokeh effect that all the photographers love and everybody wants to know how to do it. This is your aperture. And a larger aperture will create a shallow effect. So this means your subject, this is why it's best for portraits. Your subject will be your primary focus, very detailed, and the background will be blurred out. You don't always want this because sometimes you want to capture the background, but if you are doing portraits and you are a portrait photographer, this is exactly what you want to use. And this is why I like using my prime lens. Think about it this way. The larger the aperture, the larger the amount of blur. So that is the light portion of this um, 
class today. <laughs> Next we have subject and composition because light, subject, and composition are the three main fundamentals of photography. So this is where iPhone users can come in if you don't want to invest in a camera. I have some tips for you that I always use. They are my most important go-to tips and this is how I get my photos, just how I like them. So the number one is probably my favorite and most used tip. It is using golden hour. So golden hour is certain hours of the day that have softer light. Photographers say that the worst time to take a photo is noon because the light is harshest and that's when you get those awkward shadows on your face. I'm wondering if I could recreate it. I'm kind of shooting in golden hour, so I can't. It's basically those photos where half your face looks darker, you know what I'm talking about? Because the sun is like, your, your nose almost creates that shadow. So the best times to shoot photography are an hour after sunset and an hour before sunset. I usually won't start taking pictures until four o'clock or later. My favorite time right now in the summer is about six o'clock. And then as it gets darker, I kind of like to play with the sunset. Basically don't shoot at noon. If you do have to shoot at noon, try and find shade because you don't want weird shadows on your face. Um, so try and find like a bright shady spot. The second tip is use the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds is essentially a grid that you put on your photo. If I were using the rule of thirds right now, I'd probably stand like here. <laughs> I'd probably stand like here. Basically the rule of thirds is what is scientifically proven to be the most pleasing to the eye. So if your subject is in that rule of thirds grid, somewhere on one of those lines, you're golden. My next tip is to create a sense of depth. People get bored of looking at just a boring photo that doesn't look like it's moving, it doesn't look like it has any kind of depth to it. So make sure you have a subject. Even if you're shooting a landscape, it's usually best to have one thing that your camera kind of focuses on, but you can still see the background. It just creates the sense of movement and depth between your subject and the background of the photo. Tip number four, create angles with your body, okay. Again, it's really a lot more boring if I'm standing like this than if I'm standing like this. You see what I mean? I don't know if that just got blurry. Blurry. <laughs> this can be as simple as propping your arm up and now there's a triangle, look at that. Triangle. It could be popping your leg out. Just do something that's obviously natural but still a little bit more interesting to see and not just. Trust me, your viewers will thank you. Tip number five is kind of one that I've already said, but always watch your lighting. The sun moves throughout the day, um, objects create shade. You just wanna be watching so that your subject doesn't get these awkward light lines on their face and awkward shadows. It just doesn't look appealing. Now you can play around with this and edit it, but if you obviously don't have the editing skills to do that, it's really hard to make that photo come back to life. <laughs> okay, tip number five. Tip number five is something that you would hear from your photography professor, and that is work with your composition. Photography is considered a fine art for a reason. You need to think of your photo like it's a painting, and what are you trying to communicate in that painting? This is where you engage with your photo. There are actually seven basic elements of composition. You might have heard this in other classes with graphic design, but it is line, shape, form, texture, pattern, color, space. Keep all of these things in mind when you're taking your photo. What is the space between the first subject and the se second subject or the subject and their background? Do you have leading lines in your photos? Are your lines and your horizons straightened out? Which means is your horizon like this and not that? Leading lines actually helps make a photo more interesting. So this could be a road leading up to something and you're almost pointing at what your subject is. You wanna make sure everything is eliminated from the background. You have no distractions. If you're good at Photoshop, you can definitely Photoshop out people that are walking by. You always wanna keep your subject in frame. Don't cut out half of their head unless you're trying to. Of course, rules can always be broken, but generally don't. <laughs> this also includes holding your camera correctly, okay? Don't hold it sideways. I hate it when people hold it like a little bit sideways. And then balance and simplicity. They are essential to making your photo good. Photo has to be balanced. It can't be overly heavy on one side. And generally simple is always the way to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tip number seven. Tip number seven. <laughs> Use Pinterest for pose ideas and background ideas. Let me tell you the amount of times I've run out of things to take pictures of in my neighborhood because I'm always in this neighborhood taking pictures, but I have so many Pinterest boards. Tip number eight, use props for natural poses. People like candid photos way more than they like uncandid photos. 
they look unnatural generally people will be uncomfortable and so if you're holding something not only does it make the photo more interesting but it makes it easier on your model to be comfortable <laughs> and be able to look comfortable on camera otherwise they're gonna look really awkward like <laughs> you don't want that <laughs> my last tip because i lost count i think it's nine <laughs> It's try fun angles with your photo. This is my favorite thing to do and people generally will look at me like I'm crazy. I did a photo shoot for my sister a few weeks ago and at one point I was literally laying on the road shooting up at her and people walking by must have thought I was insane but I got a good photo so that's all that matters. If you wanna see how I edit my photos, um, give this video a thumbs up and let me know because I have a very distinct process of editing my photos and it's actually my favorite part. It's definitely how I make my photos unique. And so if you wanna see how I do that, I edit with Lightroom and I can do a little Lightroom tutorial. Also, uh, my photography account is gonna be linked in the description below. So if you wanna see some of the work that I've done, uh, don't forget to go check that out. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I love rambling about random things and I love just giving tips and advice. So if that is your thing, <laughs> The mic was about to fall. If that is your thing, like this video, let me know. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs> I'm not a model, I'm a photographer. <laughs> Bye.